Hey everyone, welcome to part 5 of this Godot Beginners tutorial series where we are building a endless runner game in Godot Engine. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please do subscribe now and hit that notification bell to not miss any of these tutorials going forward. So in this uh, tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, extending our player script uh, to give our player some movement and also do some detection of ground planes, which are very important in any type of platformer or jumping game. So let's uh, get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to just set up a way to detect the floor um, of our game. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and add a new node to our player. So we're going to add an, a child node and this will be a area 2D. And then to our area 2D, we're going to add a collision shape 2D. And what we'll do with the collision shape 2D is then again go and create a new rectangle shape 2D, move it down to where the feet of our player are, and then just size this to fit the feet of our player. So what we'll use this for is to detect whether we've actually touched the ground or not and then we will be able to uh, either block jumping or not depending on where our player is. Something else I want to just modify here before we go ahead is uh, our animated sprite only has three frames at the moment and is running at about uh, five frames per second. So what I want to do is I want to change this to three for now, just to then get a feel for how it looks in game when we play. Then uh, let's uh, start off with our player script. So just click on this little script icon here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change this to a kinematic body, which we're extending because we use a kinematic body here. So just simply change this to kinematic body 2D. Next, we want to just create some variables. Uh, one is going to be our velocity. So we'll set this uh, to zero initially. So I'm going to just take the velocity and I'm going to set it to vector2.0 so that we have a zero velocity to start with. Then I'm going to create two export variables because we want to adjust these variables uh, as we play test just to make sure the game feels right. and. Also, if your player is sized differently to mine, then these values will differ and you would want to adjust them. So I'm going to just start off with a jump velocity. And let's start off with a 1500.0 and then let's export another variable called gravity scale equals 20.0. So now if you don't know what export variables are, uh, just have a look here now, now that I've created those two export variables, we now have this option here in the Godot inspector. So you can then modify this and it will attach back to your script and modify the values within your script as well. Okay, so next what we want to do is we just want to start off with a very basic physics process. So we can go ahead and just create the function called physics process, which is a built-in Godot function, which handles our physics. And we want to now apply our gravity. So we'll add to our gravity on the Y axis, our gravity scale. And I'm just going to space this just to make it look a little cleaner. And uh, just to explain how this works, uh, in 2D, your gravity, well, your Y direction is positive is going to be uh, downwards and negative is going to be upwards. So we're going to be applying gravity to our player in the positive direction to make our player fall. Then next what we want to do is we want to just call move and collide and we'll use our velocity multiplied by our delta just to make it frame independent and uh, have a way of scaling it via time or our frame rate. Then next we need to create a way of getting input uh, from our, our player and then controlling the velocity of the player in our game. So what we'll do is we'll use the input function. So this will basically detect any input that comes in 
uh, in its own little loop within the Godot e ecosystem. So I'm using it for events uh, and basically button input. So what do we want to do now uh, before we go ahead with this is we need to create a map for our jump. So to do that uh, you can go into project, project settings and input map. And then you'll see I've already created it here uh, with the space bar. But if you want to create a action, just type in jump and then click on add over here and then it will create this. And then you'll click on the plus, click on key and then you can actually bind the space bar by pressing the space bar and clicking OK. Once done, close that. And now we can actually use this in our input event. So here's what we're going to do initially and we're going to test this out since this is improvised uh, coding. I'm going to uh, just start off with what I think might work and then we'll adjust it as we go along. So first I want to just make sure that our velocity is going to be zero initially when we press this button. And then what we'll do is we'll just do an event. So if event dot is action pressed and we will be using our jump which we just defined in our input map and then we'll apply our velocity dot y and we're going to subtract this time our jump velocity and what we want to do as well when we jump we want to play our animation so we're going to play jump uh, that's our jump animation. So at this point we can actually run this, see what it looks like and we're probably going to have a player that's going to be able to fly so it can jump but if we hold in spacebar we can fly. So we need to fix that and uh, also you'll see this lag on the way down is quite weird so we need to fix that as well. But let's start off with uh, just uh, getting our player to uh, stop flying and all of that stuff. So what we'll do is we need to create a lock variable. So the lock variable we'll just call can jump and we'll set that to true initially. And what we'll do now is we need to just do some detection of this can jump based off this area 2D we created earlier. So to do that click on area 2D node and what we want to do is we want to detect when our body has entered so basically touching our floor and when our body exited when our player moves off of the floor so i'm going to create both so connect this one and also then go back into area 2d and connect the exited as well right so in body entered we're going to just do a basic check if if body is of type static body 2d so you'll remember we created a static body 2d for our foreground so if you look in here there's the static body 2d so that's where this comes from so when our player actually touches a static body 2d which is this we will then execute the code under here so what we'll be checking here is we're going to be checking if a player is now obviously touching the static body 2D and then what we'll simply do is just allow the the jump because we are now grounded. Since we are grounded we know that we can play the animation run so play run animation as well. So if we have now jumped we've gone to the jump uh, animation now we go back to the run animation. Next, the exited is going to be something similar. We're just going to uh, go ahead and unblock or actually block our jump. So here we'll go and just say the same thing if body is static body 2D. Then we are going to set our can jump to false so that our player can't jump. Okay, so let's run this. And let's actually just do this as well. Let's add a print here. Player on floor. And then here we'll just print player 
not on floor. Save that. So we'll see when we run this, we don't get anything. And let's quickly just check why that is. So we've got our body, we checked our body over here and can jump, etc. And let's just have a look quickly. So jumping, are our signals connected correctly? Let's just make sure of that. So I've got a body entered, body exited. So what could be wrong here is our collision shape could be an issue. Let's make it a little tighter. And maybe what we want to do is just bring our, actually that's fine, I think. Let's bring it a little under here just to make sure it does touch the ground. See, so there we go, player on floor, player not on floor, player on floor. So that's how we detect whether they can jump. So now let's just test this. Let's uh, press it once, press it again. So you can see we could still jump, which is not right. And uh, if we hold it in, our player can still fly. So that's wrong. So what is wrong here? So if you remember, we didn't actually block, so we've set this uh, little lock over here but we haven't used it so let's uh, put it in here so if can jump then we're allowed to press our jump event so just tab that and then we can block our jumping velocity so if we press it again it slowly comes down if we hold it in we can fly if we just press it once then it slowly comes down. So the reason for this is you can see that this vector zero here is resetting the velocity while we are in the air. So to be able to fix this, we're just going to bring this velocity in to this check over here. And then what we're going to end up with is something like this. And we are jumping extremely high and falling. So we need to adjust our jump velocity. So let's try something like 600 or so. Play that. And I think that looks a little bit more reasonable. So we're jumping. If we hold in jump, we can't fly. If we hit it twice, we can't do that. And this detection is still working. So basically that's a very basic jump script that we can do. I clean out this prints because we don't need them anymore. And that's the basic jump script for our player. So we might look at uh, using state machines, which will be quite nice for this as well. Um, but because this is an improvised uh, tutorial series, we might not. Uh, I'm not going to make any promises. But if we do feel like it's going to be useful and uh, we have time to do it, then we will definitely bring in state machines as well for this. So guys, that's basically the end of this tutorial. If you uh, liked it, uh, please give a like below and comment if you have any questions. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.